September 2024, I set off on a journey cycling down the Rhine River. I wanted to learn from local people about their connection to the river and about how they're helping to restore and protect this water system. Join me on this nine part series where I explore different topics with local people along the river that are driving positive change. I'm a marine researcher and I don't know much about rivers, but I know that what happens upstream in the river affects the ocean. So my goal for this trip was to learn about how some of the positive actions that are being done on the river could also be benefiting the ocean. And through this trip, I wanted to speak with local people and to understand what motivates them to protect the river and to hear about their vision for its future as well. The Rhine River is one of Europe's major rivers. It flows more than 1,200 kilometers all the way from the Swiss Alps to the North Sea. And it passes through six countries and connects a further three by tributaries. So it has a massive water catchment of 200,000 kilometers squared, where more than 60 million people live. It's connected societies for centuries. It provides a place for recreation, it provides drinking water and also trade routes for generations. So there's been extensive industrialization on the river for things like shipping and for hydropower, which has drastically altered the natural river. And this has led to the loss of natural habitats and species that once inhabited the region. The repercussions of this are felt in the wider catchment and all along the river, so this also may include the ocean. For example, migratory fish species are drastically declining in the river, and this includes like salmon populations. There's also agriculture and industrial chemicals that have reduced water quality in the river and along the coastline as well. There's urban waste, including things like microplastics, which have been recorded in record levels within the Rhine River. And all of these have also been found in the ocean and in its food chains as well. Yet despite all this, there are still remnants of how the river once looked. There are winding meanders of crystal blue water, which is dense with vegetation that filters pollution from the water. There were areas with dragonflies, with frogs, beetles, and this biodiversity really gives the river resilience to things like climate change. And there are regions of dense vegetation and moss-covered trees, which indicate a relatively healthy environment compared to the rest of the river. So all of these are a sign of what the river could look like in the future if we allow it. There's this new era emerging for rivers, not only on the Rhine, but globally as well. It's an era that balances the demands of the economy with the needs of society and nature as well. It considers the connection between the river and its whole catchment, all the way from the tributaries that trickle down from the tallest mountains, all the way out to the ocean. It's a way of managing the river that considers the water cycle holistically, all the way from the source to the sea. I started in the Swiss Alps at Lake Toma, which is the official source of the Rhine. At this point, the river begins as a cold crystal blue alpine lake surrounded by mountain peaks. And then the water trickles over the edge of the mountain and the Rhine begins its journey through the valleys, at first out of sight, and then it joins up with numerous tributaries as they too make the journey towards the sea. As it flows, the river meanders and it widens and it glistens under the sunlight with pale grey gravel illuminating the turquoise water from below. And this was enjoyed by a lucky few people who I saw swimming and taking photos along its banks. Soon the river meets society, um, flowing past fields, industrial plants and towns. The Alpine Rhine decants into Lake Constance, which is enjoyed for recreation at the intersection of Switzerland, Germany and Austria. It emerges on the western banks as the High Rhine, and the river continues its journey towards Basel, through fields, through vineyards, and over the infamous Rhine Falls, which is Europe's most powerful waterfall. And then it travels through scenic towns, where it's enjoyed by countless people as a place to relax and float downstream. From Basel, the river turns north along the border between France and Germany, and through the cities of Strasbourg and Mannheim, where the Upper Rhine morphs into an industrial shipping channel lined by concrete walls, extensive agriculture and gravel pits. This is a stark goodbye to the picturesque river that flowed before it. So the Upper Rhine passes through Rheinhessen, which is Germany's largest wine region, and then it transitions into the Middle Rhine, as it flows through the steep-sided valleys of the infamous picturesque Rhine Gorge, which is lined with vineyards, into the city of Koblenz, where the International Commission for the Protection of the Rhine is actually located. Walking and cycling paths line the banks here, and I saw people picnicking and fishing along the riverside as well. So the river then transitions into the Lower Rhine, through the major city of Cologne, and through Diesberg, which is the world's largest inland port, and I guess this is a symbol of industrialization of the river. 
As the Rhine flows into the Netherlands, it meets the Meuse and the Schout rivers, becoming the rhine meuse Schout Delta. And this weaves its way through numerous channels through the flat landscape of the Netherlands and out through human-made dikes all the way into the North Sea. Spending three weeks and over 1,400 kilometers along the river brought me a new kind of understanding, which was that rivers are not just a single channel that lead from the mountains to the sea, but they're a meeting point of cultures, they're a record of human development, and they're a confluence of multiple tributaries that each have their own origin, their stories and ecosystems, all of which flow towards the same end, which is the ocean. This film showcases some of the people and the projects that are trying to improve the quality of the Rhine River for the benefit of society and for nature. Join me on this nine part series where I explore different topics with local people along the river that are driving positive change.